Welcome back to the studio. We are talking about another exciting piece of gear today. And, and this one I think is a must have for a lot of people. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and then also subscribe to the Backcountry BSing channel for all of our awesome podcasts. And get some merch. And buy a hat. merch. Get a hat. You could have this hat. That exact one, he'll sign it for you. I don't know if I'll sign it for you, <laughs> but you can have this hat. Today we are talking about the Sidewinder series of bags from Big Agnes. I think they're really innovative. I think a lot of people could use them and I'm, I'm really excited to do the full review today. We're gonna to talk about uh, how much use I've put it through, obviously what I like, what I don't like, some little, some little tips and tricks with it, some little quirky things I really like about it, and then at the end, like who I think should really buy this bag. I first found out about the Big Agnes Sidewinder a little over a year ago. I think Backpacker Magazine was doing some sort of like segment on innovative gear, and I remember seeing it and I was like, wow, that's that's kind of interesting. If you're not familiar with the Sidewinder sleeping bag, it is a sleeping bag made specifically for people that sleep on their side and it's, you know, it's engineered to be to be optimally used for people on their side. I thought that was pretty cool because like sleeping bag technology has not changed at all since like I don't know, the 1920s, it's always the same kind of style. You know, they put a mummy bag on it now. That's That's been like the biggest thing that's happened to sleeping bags in the last like 15 years. But the sleeping bag design has not changed. And that was always kind of curious to me. Also, the vast majority of people, and I read a statistic, it's like 70%. We'll have to, you have to fact check me on that. But I read a statistic and it kind of makes sense that most people, like 70% of people at some point throughout the course of the night will spend some amount of time on their side. Even if they're like a dedicated back sleeper, you know, people roll around, people tussle, and most people, the vast majority of people will spend some time on their side and, and classic sleeping bags are not designed to be to be used when sleeping on your side. You know, they're, they're meant to be back like that, like a mummy. So it was always crazy to me that no one had ever tried to engineer and change that. In came Big Agnes, they they really redesigned what a sleeping bag is supposed to be like and really tried to tailor it to the side, the side sleeping crowd and they did a great job. Real quick, let's talk about some of the specs of this bag. And more importantly, this bag comes in a lot of different variants to suit a lot of people's different needs. You know, you don't have to get a super light one if you don't have to, they have different temperature ratings. So I really like the variability you can get with this bag. Let's quickly talk about the different variants they have of this bag. So the, the biggest difference is they have what's called an SL version and they have what's called a camp version. The SL version uses down, like real down, and the camp version uses synthetic down. The biggest difference there is price and weight. The camp versions are significantly cheaper, you know, 80 to $100 cheaper, but they're about 10 to 16 ounces heavier. So there's camp and SL versions. Then there's 20 degree, 30 degree, and I believe like a 40 or 45 degree in both iterations. So you have SL camp, and then you have a different uh, few temperature indexes within them. Then they also make a men's and a women's version. It's kind of cool they do that. They cut the women's version obviously a little bit differently because women's bodies are different than men's. So they have men's, women's, camp, SL, a bunch of different degree versions, and then they also have regular and large. So there's like 30 different permutations of this bag. I'm 6'2", I got the large. I think that was a very good decision. If you're someone who's over, over six feet tall, go with the large. But so yeah, you got medium, large, SL, camp, men's, women's, 20, 30 degree. Uh, not a lot of color choices though, but a lot of different versions of this bag. After over a year of use and taking this bag to West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Colorado, California, and using it in a bunch of different climates in the summer and the winter, I'm finally ready to give the full review. It should be noted, I've got the Sidewinder Ultralight Variant 20 degree bag. So first, let's talk about what I like about this bag. And the very first thing, it's the innovative design, and I'm gonna go into it more, but they crush the design. Here are the things I really like about this bag. The first is the zipper. So as you can see, they put the zipper down the middle, which makes a lot more sense, and it's a great zipper. It's so smooth, look at that. 
smooth traction. I don't like how it's orange, that's okay. The zipper is fantastic and it doesn't get caught on the inside down. And then they also have insulated behind the zipper. So you won't get cold spots coming through the zipper. Next thing I really like about this bag and I think it's, re it's really what sold me on getting it and what really separates it and that's the hood design. So this thing, when you're in it, it's like a hoodie hood, like that. It comes up and fully encloses your face. It's fantastic and they've also put draft collars going around the outside of the hood and then as we kind of talked about, they've put this mesh behind the hood where you can stuff your pillow or clothes or whatever so when you move from side to side, your pillow kind of stays with you. So the hood is fantastic, the, the zipper is fantastic. Another thing they do with this bag, which I think is really ingenious, is they, they put different amounts of down in the bag based on where you are in the bag. So for instance, the foot box and the head is more insulated than this middle part. So they, they, they get really strategic and efficient with where they put the down. And then they also put a little bit of synthetic down in the head and the toe as well. It's also worth mentioning that Big Agnes is a good company. They're, uh, you know, they're an American company. The stuff's not American made anymore. It used to be, but they're a good company. They have good customer service and they, they have a high build quality for the stuff that they produce. And I've been using Big Agnes tents for a long time. I've used two or three different Big Agnes tents. I've used a bunch of their stuff and the sleeping bag quality is up to par with Big Agnes. And I would even say cottage vendor tier quality. Additionally, and this is kind of an interesting thing to talk about, but for a bag this size, and it's a little bit bigger because of the, the head area, it's a little bit bigger than most bags, but it really does compress really well. Now, I have the version that has down in it. You can get a version of it that has synthetic in it, and that's not going to compress as much, but the one I have really compresses really well. And, and, and for a bag that size, cause I've got the, the I've got the large one, right? Cause I'm, I'm a big guy. It compresses down pretty small and it's a pretty good feature of the bag. Additionally, I think, you know, the, the kind of nylon they used, it's like really comfortable. Like the inside feel feels really good. I wasn't expecting that. Um, it's, it's up there with the cottage vendor quilts I have, honestly, like the nylon they use on the inside, it's very comfortable. It's a good sleeping experience. In recap, the things I like, the main things I like about it are the engineering and how this thing really is designed to sleep on your side and it, it's not BS, it works really well. And then, you know, all the other things we talked about, Big Agnes is a great company. It's reasonably priced, it's built well. Now, let's talk about some of the things maybe I don't like so much about this, this bag. First, and you know, it, it's hard to blame Big Agnes and I've never had a sleeping bag that didn't do this, but I'm getting down feathers poking out of there. I've been losing a decent amount of feathers and I've never had a down sleeping bag or quilt that didn't do that. But I was hoping because this is a little bit of heavier material, maybe feels a little bit thicker. I don't know. I was hoping I wouldn't get, you know, all the feathers that would come out of it. And I, I'm losing some feathers. Once again, I, I, I don't necessarily hold that against this bag. I've never had a bag or a quilt that didn't do that, but it is annoying. You know, every time you like fluff it up or bring it out, like little feathers pop everywhere. And then if you're rolling around and you feel one of those dig into your side, it really hurts. Another thing I don't really like, and I, I didn't think would be as much of an issue, but at night, like if it's super cold, uh, I, I like having my arms out of the bag and I like doing like doing things with my arms and like this, your arms are kind of in there and I don't love that. I don't know where to put my arms. Also just to like gripe a little bit, like the little pouch where you put your cell phone. First off, you know, as discussed, I love that there's a pouch there. It's super helpful for keeping things warm that need to be warm. And also I, I sleep with white noise sometimes. So it's nice to have the cell phone pouch right by your head and zippered, but the pouch is a little small and I'll be honest with you. I have a big phone and it barely fits in there. So I don't know. They could have just made it a little bigger. It's, it's not huge. It's, it's, it's big enough for, you know, a medium sized cell phone, but my, my current phone like barely fits in there. Another thing, and, and this is not a, a negative to the bag, but one of the features that I kind of talked about earlier is it's got this mesh that you can put your pillow in. And I thought that was really cool. Like, cause when you're moving around at night, you don't want, you could, it'd be cool to have your pillow move with you. But honestly, I never use that mesh because one, 
I just could, all my pillows and I, you know, I don't have huge pillows. They wouldn't fit in there. So it's really made. Now what I would do is you can shove like clothing in that little mesh thing behind your head and use that as a pillow and that, and that's okay. And it works if you're moving from side to side, but like I didn't end up using that mesh because my, my actual, like I do carry a tiny little camp pillow. Um, it couldn't fit in there. And like, I also, when I don't carry a pillow, I carry the Z packs bag. That's got the felt on one side and I shove clothes in there and that wouldn't fit in there. So if you use a pillow, it might not fit in there. So thus making the mesh worthless to you. Also, you know, a slight negative to this is because of the design, because of the materials they use, it is a little bit heavier than a classic mummy bag. And then certainly it's a lot heavier than a quilt, but it, it does seem to be at least a little bit heavier than another bag I have. And like looking up the weights, it's, it's a slightly heavier. Um, it's because of the design and, and I do think it's worth it, but it is a little bit heavier just because of the way they've designed it compared to some some other bags in that class. But it does compress really well, which I think is also valuable. Um, and it's, it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait to get a good night's sleep. Come on. Lastly, they do market, like the bag I have, they market as a 20 degree bag. The coldest I got to use it, I took it hot tenning, but that, that doesn't really count. And I took it on one winter trip and it didn't get down to 20. It got down to like, I think 26. And like, I had a lot of clothes on and I was fine, but I think that 20 degree rating, like we do see with a lot of other bags, like that's not a comfort rating. That's a survivability rating. So places like underground quilts, like UGQ, their ratings are comfort ratings, not survivability ratings. So what I'm trying to say is the 20 degree bag, if I had that at 20 degrees without extra clothes or anything, I would have been cold. So. I wasn't necessarily expecting to not be cold because I do know that most of these companies, it's a survivability rating, not a comfort rating, but just know if you get this 20 degree bag and you take it to 20 degrees, you're gonna want some extra clothes or something or a really warm mat or something and uh, because it might be a little cold. However, on the flip side, the design of this bag with that hood, the hood's incredible. It's a much better winter bag than a mummy bag. And then obviously it's a million times better winter bag if you're sleeping on your side because the mummy on your side really doesn't work out well for me. So so in summary, the temperature rating is a, definitely a survival rating, not a comfort rating, but the design of the bag itself is, makes it a much better winter bag. So at the end of the day, who would I recommend this bag to? For starters, if you're someone like me that sleeps on their side 100% of the time, and you don't want to use a quilt or you do a lot of winter backpacking and i don't like quilts in the winter i think this is a must buy for those side sleepers i just talked about it's a it is just it's a much better fit and feel and comfort when you're on your sa side in this bag versus a mummy bag like they they hit that one out of the park however if you're not someone that sleeps on their side i don't necessarily know if you'd need something like this and obviously, if you're someone that sleeps on their side, but only does it in warm weather with quilts, uh, you probably don't need this. I'll be honest with you. I used this bag in the summer in Colorado, the 20 degree bag, and it was pretty warm. I mean, the, the way the hood insulates you, like it was pretty warm. I had to like throw a leg out, strip some layers off. It was a little too warm in the summer, but that they have some other temperature variants. So it might, might make that a little better. But if you're a quilt person, and even though you sleep on your side and, and cold weather is not your thing, I don't necessarily know if you need something like this, but I'll stick to my guns. If you're a side sleeper permanently like me and most people and you do cold weather or three season cooler backpacking and you want something that's going to be beefier than a quilt, buying this is a no brainer. Big Agnes makes great products. This is another great product. And I, I love the innovation, right? It's about time somebody made a sleeping bag for side sleepers, right? There's dozens of us. That is it for my full review of the Big Agnes Sidewinder sleeping bag. A, a truly innovative piece of gear that I think a lot of people can benefit from and it's definitely worth checking out. That's it for this gear review. We'll be back on the trail soon. Bye-bye.